Well, it's Friday. Let me just start by telling you, if I look kind of out of it, I am. You know, when I left Texas, I thought, gee, I'm never going to have to go through allergy season again. I think in, in January and February, a cedar fever is just terrible. It wiped me out for many years. Now here, what do you know, about two weeks ago, I started feeling uh, kind of down, run down, my nose is running, my eyes are itching, my throat is scratchy, and lo and behold, I started asking people, and they see, you see all that yellow stuff floating all around and growing there? It says that's uh, tree pollen. It lasts for a couple of months. Uh, so it's kind of wiping me out. So, you know, and I was struggling already with high blood pressure, and so I'm sure this isn't helping me and stressing me out and all that. So one person wrote me a whole bunch of things I could do to bring my blood pressure down. And one of the things she su suggested was that I make myself a big pot of pinto beans. Now, when I was a little boy, I used to help my mother and grandmother sort through the beans. You know, they'd pour it out on the table and we'd pull all the rocks out and everything like that. But they'd boil it. They'd put it in a pot and do all that. But I had never actually done it. So I decided to do it. So one person told me, says, well, here's what you got to do. You got to boil the water and then put the beans in it. Make sure you rinse the beans first, put them in, uh, bring it to a boil and turn it down a little bit and uh, make sure to, there's about an inch of water covering the beans and uh, just let it, uh, it kind of boil uh, lowly for about two hours. So I thought, okay, two hours. So, well, you know what, I'm a, it's a good time to take a nap. <laughs> Big mistake. About an hour into my nap, I'm smelling, the next thing I know, my whole room is full of smoke. I got the smell of burnt beans all through my condo. I went and turned, huh, turned the fan on, opened the door, trying to get all the smoke out. And I thought I was at two hours. I'm only into an hour of this. Then I looked at the beans in the pot, and I thought to myself, how can I salvage these? Second big mistake. So I'm trying to pull out all the burnt beans out of it. And I thought, well, you know, I'll make refried beans out of these. So I'm smashing them down and all that. They were horrible. I just threw them all out. But that kind of started my day. <laughs> so you're going to have to stay with me on this one. Hey, listen, this is a great passage that we're going to do. Look, turn in your Bibles to 1 John chapter 2. We're going to talk about a new way of loving, a new way to love. Okay, oh, love. You know, that's such a misused words today. I know Miss Elsie used to tell me all the time, you know, she said, I hate it when people tell me that they love me and they don't know me. And, and I didn't really understand her too many years later. And then I began to understand because I was beginning to see the true definition of love biblically before I had a world understanding of what love was. You know, and so we're going to talk about love. Now, uh, let, let me just start by telling you, when I met Miss Elsie many years ago, I knew instinctively that she loved me because I never felt and never had any kind of person address me the way she did. Okay, this was something different than I had ever experienced before. Now, I had seen something different and that's when I got led to the Lord and that's when uh, Lieutenant Paul Johnson picked me up on the road, took me to Lackland Air Force Base and among all these men I could see that they had something. I couldn't put a word on it. It wasn't until later that I knew you, that you will know that they are my disciples if they have love one for another. And I saw that. And I had just gotten out of service. And where I was at in the service, uh, there wasn't a lot of love demonstrated or shown among the GIs there. But here this group was. So I was seeing love in a different way. One with Miss Elsie. And also one when I saw these soldiers all together. Okay. Now, I'm going to read this passage to you. I'm going to ask you some interpretive questions. 
because a lot of people have a problem with this passage and then I'm going to explain it to you and then ask you where you are. But this is a new way of loving that God wants us to do. And if you're a true believer, it's one way of demonstrating whether that's real or not. Okay? So we're in First uh, John chapter 2. And now, we start in verse 3, and I had already talked a little bit about this last time, so let me just read it real quick. We know that we have come to know him if we obey his commands. Now, let's pay attention to that word, commands. The man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love, and there's the word love, is truly made complete in him. This is how we know that we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus walked. How did Jesus walk? And this is where we come to the next two verses where people have a problem. Okay. Dear friends, I am not writing you a new command, but an old one, which you have had since the beginning. The old command is the message you have heard. Yet, I'm writing you a new command. I'm not writing you an old. I'm writing you a new. Is that contradictory? I'm not going to write you an old, but I'm going to write you a new. Okay, so uh, l let me keep going here. Yet I'm writing you a new commandment. Its truth is seen in him and you because the darkness is passing and the true light is always shining. So, it, it seems like, is he contradicting himself? In the old command, he says, I'm not writing this versus a new command. I am writing. He says, I'm not writing, but I am writing. You know? And I got to thinking about that. Is he being hypocritical? Is he contradicting himself? I know the Bible doesn't contradict itself, there, so there must be a, a, a way of understanding. So it's when you come up with what's called interpretive questions, okay? And you, you ask the simple questions here. Yeah. So I also ask the question, well, what is the old command? So if you go to the very next chapter, 3 in verse 11, it says this, this is the message you had heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Okay, and then and also in verse 23, it says, uh, and this is the command to believe in the name of the Son of Jesus Christ and to love one another as he commanded us. So the old command was to love. The new command was to love. What's the difference? Okay, how is this command that he's giving, this new command, new? Okay, so let's break down the word love, first of all. In the Bible, you have uh, a number of different words that are used for love. One is called storge. Storge is a, is a parental love. It has parental affection. You ever see a, a mother with a new baby right away, that instinctive love for her child? You know, you heard the saying, there is no love like a mother's love for her child. And uh, that's called storge. But he's not talking about that. Another is phileo. That's more of a brotherly love. You know, your, your, your sisters are you know, or brothers and fam familia, a family love, okay? And then there's uh, Eros. Eros is more of a passionate, erotica, Hollywood type of love. This is where you get a lot of self-love. That's where you have people that are entitled, selfish. That's where you have the whole realm of infatuation. I love you because you got long hair. I love you because you got nice legs. I love you because you're rich. I love you if you do this for me. I love you if you do. That's all in the conditional love. He's not talking about that. What he is talking about is agape. But agape is in a different sense. Agape is a selfless love that 
is ministering to another person at the cost of yourself. For God so agape the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God gave his son. That's agape. He sacrificially gave him. Okay. Now, when you do these kind of things, this anybody can do this. You don't have to be a believer. Okay. Uh, you have unbelievers that love their children, that brothers and sisters love one another. You have that romantic type of love that goes on. That happens in the in the natural realm. It also happens in the realm of the fallen world, which is dark. Okay? So he's not talking about that. And we have to understand this. He's talking about a new way to love. And this is what I'm going to get to. And this is the message here that I need to drive home to you. He's talking about love that has been recreated. Okay? It's a covenant love. It's unconditional love that Miss Elsie had for me. Okay, unconditional means it put no boundaries on me. It put no expectation of change to me. I've had people try to change me. You know, and, 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 and you know, they say women like bad boys. Well, I was a real bad boy. I was not very lovable. Some people still think I'm not very lovable. But I she loved me in spite of it. It was unconditional. It's the same kind of love that God demonstrates to us. And what he's saying here, I'm writing you a new commandment that you love and you walk as Jesus is because this is the kind of love that Jesus did. Now, here's the, here's the problem. You can't do that kind of love unless the Holy Spirit is doing it for you and through you. Okay, so you need to understand, you've got to be walking in the spirit and in the light in order to exemplify this kind of love, okay? It is in the light, and it's a spiritual kind of love, okay? It's a covenant love. It's an act of the will that does not change. Once you come to understand that kind of love, you can experience it and you can give it to other people. Now, what was going on though, and I'll read the rest of you, and if you see in, in the very next verse, he, he says, anyone who claims to be in the light over here, but hates his brother is still in darkness. Whoever loves his brother lives in the light. And there is nothing in him to make him stumble. But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks around in darkness. He does not know where he's going because the darkness has blinded him. How many Christians have you run into like that? That profess to be Christians? Very judgmental. They say bad things about you. They slander you. Yet they go around claiming they love their brothers and they sing hallelujah in church and all this stuff. Uh, uh, you know, and that's one of the beautiful things about having been the recipient that I was of Miss Elsie on the kind of love that she had for me. I can distinguish that which is real and that which is not. Okay? Again, it has no... It has, it's totally unconditional. It has no boundaries and it has no change. What are the people that are self-love and erotica? They love you if you, you can give them something in return. Okay? You've got to have a certain kind of quality, a certain kind of look, or a certain kind of possessions. And it's very conditional. So he's not talking about that. A spiritual love is not... <clears throat> It's, it's not a, does not embrace that type of worldly aspiration or demands like Christian love does. And here's the new command that you love one another as Jesus has loved you. Well, how are you going to do that? There's no way you can do that 
if you're self-willed. Jesus says, anyone that wants to follow me must be able to die to self, take up his cross and follow me. And that's when you say, Father God, help me love this person. Allow me to allow your spirit to work through me to love this person in a way that's permanent, unconditional. How many women and men make vows? They make covenant vows for marriage and yet they break them. They never had any love. And they say, well, I fell out of love. Well, if, if you fell out of love, you never wore in spiritual love. For if you said you loved him, but now you hate him, you're still in darkness, people. You're not walking in light. You're walking in darkness. You didn't have the real thing. It was, it was a fraud. It was fake. It was Hollywood. You know, it's pretentious. It was demanding. Oh, to be loved unconditionally. You know, isn't that what everybody needs? Okay. Why do you think so many people like dogs? <laughs> because they know the dog will love them. You know, unconditionally. I'm not a cat person. I, I like kittens. Don't get me wrong, because I can play with a kitten. When we, a, a kitten gets to be about a year old, they get too, they get too uppity. You know, they want to control everything. I don't, I don't do well with that. Okay. <laughs> but I love dogs, you know. And if, so if you want to be loved like a dog, <laughs> you need to find a good soulmate or a Christian that is truly spirit-filled and spirit-led so that then they can do this new command. So he's not writing the new command in that sense. He's not being hypocritical. What he's saying is, I'm talking to you about love that you've heard from the beginning. Only this new love has a new quality to it. It's expressed through your submission to the Holy Spirit so he can do his thing through you. So let me ask you one final question. Which way are you currently loving? To your family? To your friends? To your enemies? To God? It's a tough message. And it's a good one for you to dwell on. But notice what he said. It's a command, not a request. If you're a true believer, then you're commanded to love in this way. If you're having that to be a real problem, then perhaps you need to re-examine whether you're truly in the light or you are, in fact, in darkness, as he says. God bless you all. Go and do the right thing.